Assalamu alaikum students, I am Vaseem Ikram. This is the 8th lecture in a series of 45 lectures on digital logic design. Kaise hain aapa? Inshallah, achche honge. Pishli dafa humne operational characteristics pe baat shuru ki thi. Mushkil topic tha, par kaafi detail mein discussion hui thi. And I hope you have understood the topic. Aaj hum inshallah ek nai topic pe baat shuru karenge, Boolean algebra. But before we start with Boolean algebra, let us quickly revise the uh, things which we had done in the last lecture. In fact, I had a table in which we compare different uh, uh, CMOS and TTL uh, gates and we look at the actual values. So, let us start our discussion by revising the contents which we had uh, studied in the last lecture. Uh, operational characteristics the four five important parameters the. First parameter tha DC supply voltage. So her circuit ko ek DC supply voltage chahiye taaki wo kam kare. So five volts usually hum use karte hain. To TTL ke liye five volt supply voltage chahiye. Isi tarah CMOS ke liye bhi five volts chahiye. CMOS ki ek aur series hai jisme three point three volts uh, supply voltage chahiye. Then we talked about the noise margin. Noise margin is that her logic level high or low, it is represented by certain voltage levels. So, if the signal is within those voltage levels, then the whole circuit will be fine. But due to some external noise, some other factors, the logic 1 or logic 0 representation is from that voltage range. Uh, due to that, the circuit might not work. So, we have calculated noise margins. We have seen that the CMOS is a 5 volt version, the noise margins are more than the noise margins. That means that in a noisy environment, it can work very well. The third parameter which we looked at was the power dissipation. Every circuit uses power, of course, current flow, it needs energy. वो कितने वॉट्स कंज्यूम कर रहा है उसमें? शो हमने टीडीएल के लिए देखा, सीमोस के लिए देखा। टीडीएल के लिए जो पावर रिक्वायरमेंट है, वो मोर लेस फिक्स्ड है। सीमोस के लिए जो पावर रिक्वायरमेंट है, वो वेरी करती है विद रिस्पेक्ट टू फ्रीक्वेंसी, क्योंकि सीमोस सर्किट्स में कैपेसिटिव लोड है। जब so, when the frequency of a CMOS circuit increases, the power dissipation also increases. So, uska CMOS circuits ka variable uh, power dissipation ho gi. Isko jab hum mayer karte hain, ya kahin ab uh, uh, likhte hain, to ek static power dissipation ho gi, aur ek dynamic uh, power dissipation ho gi, wo abhi aage ja ke hum table mein dekhte hain. एक और जो पैरामीटर हमने देखा था प्रोपेगेशन डिले का प्रोपेगेशन डिले हमने ये कहा था कि हर गेट जो है अगर उसके इनपुट पे कोई आप वेरिएबल्स अप्लाई करें जीरोस एंड वन्स तो एक खास डिले के बाद उसके आउटपुट पे कोई वैल्यू आपको मिलेगी सो ये जो डिले है दैट वुड बेसिकली डिटरमिन हाउ फास्ट ए सिग्नल कैन चेंज एट द इनपुट ऑफ एनी गेट डिले फैक्टर्स से अगर ज़्यादा हाई फ्रीक्वेंसी पे चेंज हो रहा है तो वो काम नहीं करेगा उसमें। एक हमने बात की थी ए प्रोडक्ट ऑफ द स्पीड एंड डिसिपेशन। इन दोनों का प्रोडक्ट एक नंबर देगा, उससे आप कंपेयर कर सकते हैं डिफरेंट गेट्स। फाइनली हमने देखा था फैन फैन आउट। फैन आउट ये था कि हाउ मेनी गेट्स कैन वी कनेक्ट टू द आउटपुट ऑफ अनदर गेट। वेल बेसिकली वी सेड इट डिपेंड्स ऑन द करंट व्हिच द गेट कैन सप्लाई टू द इनपुट्स ऑफ डिफरेंट गेट्स। अगेन रिस्ट्रिक्शन है। टीटीएल में फिक्स नंबर ऑफ फैन आउट्स हैं। सीमोस में ये डिपेंड करता है फ्रीक्वेंसी पे। अगर आप हाई फ्रीक्वेंसी पे सर्किट ऑपरेट करना चाह रहे हैं, देन आपका फैन आउट कम होगा। दैट मींस कम नंबर ऑफ गेट्स कनेक्ट करने पड़ेंगे। अगर आप लो फ्रीक्वेंसी पे ऑपरेट कर रहे हैं, देन यू कैन कनेक्ट मोर नंबर ऑफ गेट्स टू द आउटपुट ऑफ ए गेट। सो ये पांच इम्पोर्टेंट पैरामीटर्स थे। लेट अस हैव अ लुक एट द टेबल जहां हम डिफरेंट गेट्स को कंपेयर करते हैं और एक्चुअल जो नंबर्स हैं उनको जरा देखते हैं उसमें। उसके बाद the low power shot key, 74AS, the advanced 
short key and the uh, the 74 ALS the advanced low power short key and the 74 F the fast version of TTL in ke agar propagation delays ko dekhen, the standard version has a propagation delay of 9 nanoseconds which is uh, almost the highest uh, propagation uh, propagation delay 74 LS ka propagation delay 9.5 nanoseconds hai fast ka aur ALS ka bahut kam hai AS ka bhi bahut kam hai 1.7 hai power dissipation ko agar dekhen milliwatts mein measure karte hain uh, a um, 74 s short key ki power dissipation sabse zyada hai 20 hai uh, low power short key ki power dissipation 2 hai isi tarah advanced low power short key ki power dissipation 1.2 hai ek important jo parameter tha speed power product pico joules mein measure karte hain so inko zara agar dekhe aap uh, 4.8 jo hai wo lowest hai als ka right so ye jo gate hai saron se better hai in terms of power dissipation and uh, uh, propagation delay jo standard version hai uska highest hai 90 hai uh, maximum clock rate jis pe ye operate kar sakte hain wo bhi idhar diya hua hai so standard jo uh, ttl hai gate 35 megahertz pe operate kar raha hai jo advanced short key hai wo 200 megahertz tak operate kar leta hai advanced low power short key taqriban 70 megahertz tak operate kar leta hai fan out jo hai Again, 74 standard jo hai, 10 gates can be connected. Isi tarah jo short key hai, 20 gates can be connected. Advanced short key ke saath 40 gates tak aap connect kar sakte hain. Let us now look at the CMOS series. Pehle hum 5 volt series ko dekhte hain, uske baad 3.3 volt series ko dekhte hain. So 5 volt series mein you have the 74HC, 74AC and the 74AHC. Propagation agar delays dekhen, ye kam hai as compared to uh, TTL uh, logic ke. Power dissipation to bahut hi kam hai, 0.00275 hai for 74HC, isi tarah 0.0055 hai for 74AC. CMOS series mein humne ye bataya tha ke power dissipation vary karti hai uh, low frequency pe and high frequency pe. So static, uh, power dissipation static jo hai, that means uh, no operations or low frequencies uspe power dissipation as i've said before it's 0.00275 same gate agar 100 kilohertz pe operate kar raha ho to uski power dissipation increase ho jati hai to 0.0625 similarly for 74ac the power dissipation increases to 0.08 at 100 kilohertz speed power product jo hai at 100 kilohertz वो 1.125 है 74HC के लिए, 0.4 है 74AC के लिए एंड 0.23 है 74AHC के लिए। अगर स्पीड पावर प्रोडक्ट कंपेयर करें TTL के साथ तो अगेन बहुत कम है। मैक्सिमम क्लॉक रेट इस इट इस 50 फॉर HC, फॉर AC इट्स 160 मेगाहर्ट्ज एंड फॉर AHC इट्स 170 मेगाहर्ट्ज। now let us have a look at the 3.3 volt CMOS series, the 74LV, the 74LVC and the 74ALVC. Propagation delay again are very low, 9, 4.3 and 3 respectively. Power dissipation, the static power dissipation is again very low, uh, 0 0.0016, 0 0.0008 and 0 0.0008 for the three gates respectively. Operational uh, clock rate, maximum clock rate jo hai, megahertz mein, it's 90, 100 and 150 respectively. We have just looked at some parameters of TTL and CMOS gates. So by looking at, by comparing those numbers, you can just uh, see which gate is better and which particular gate is required for your particular uh, implementation. Now let us start with today's topic, Boolean algebra. Boolean algebra how is it different from the conventional uh, algebra? Well, Boolean algebra has two values. Conventional algebra mein bahut sari values aati hain. Boolean algebra mein, since it is dealing with binary values, so uski ek value 0 hogi, dusri value 1 hogi. So let us start by looking at some definitions of Boolean algebra. Boolean algebra में हम literal use करते हैं, complement की बात करते हैं, and variables की बात करते हैं. What is a variable? Variable programming में भी आप use करते हैं. It is a symbol which represents a value. 
So Boolean algebra mein, a variable is usually a capital letter, alphabet letter A, B, C, Z, N, right. So it represents a value, value kya hogi? Either it is going to be a 0 or a 1 because it is of course representing a Boolean value or a binary value. Complement kya hai? Complement humne ye bataya tha, the inverse of a variable. So if variable A has the value 0, A bar would have the value 1. So the bar represents the inverse of the complement. Literal kya hai? Literal could be the variable or its complement. So let us say B bar hai, it is considered to be a literal. B jo hai, uska complement, again it is considered to be a literal. So ye teen definitions hai, jo hum bar bar use karne honge. Okay, Boolean algebra kyun use kyun karne? Basically mathematics hum kyun use karne? Ek fayda to mathematics ka ye hai, ke all real world problems can be represented in the form of equations. Fayda kya hota hai? Usse hum baut sare real world phenomena check kar sakte hai ya implement kar sakte hai in the form of mathematical equations. Let me give you an example. A cup iron rod le, let's say a inch diameter ka. A end pe aap usko heat karna shuru kare. And you need to determine ke dousre end pe, let's say a foot ka long uh, rod hai, dousre end pe kitne time mein 50 degrees temperature ho jayega. Right? Now this entire heating of an iron rod can be modeled using a mathematical equation. Now if you have an equation, then you can perform, you do not need to perform an experiment. You do not need to get an actual rod and heat that. Theek hai? Aap ek, uh, equation se hi, aap different values dalein aur aap ek answer calculate kar sakte hai. In fact, if you have an equation, then you can um, use different rods, different metal ke rods ho sakte hai, different diameter ke rods ho sakte hai, right. So, mathematics solves the problem. Aapko practically koji is karne nahi Similarly, Boolean algebra allows you to represent digital circuits in terms of expressions. Fayda kya hoga? Ek fayda to ye hai ke let's suppose you have a very complex, complicated circuit having different gates. Ab Wo circuit kaise perform karega, kya output aayegi? Well, one way is to practically implement that circuit. Aapko time zyada lagega, aapke paise kharch honge usme. So, the easiest way would be to represent that circuit through a Boolean expression, a mathematical expression of different input combinations usme aap apply karein and you get the answer. So, you can easily check if that particular circuit is going to work correctly or otherwise. You can use a Boolean expression to simplify circuits. Let us suppose you have a circuit composed of 20 gates. It performs a certain function. Now you could implement the same function using 5 gates. Now if you implement a circuit having 5 gates, that means the circuit is going to be faster, less propagation delay, uh, the power requirement would be reduced. So it would be better than the previous circuit which uses more gates. Now how would you simplify a circuit? Well by looking at the circuits, it is very difficult to find out the simplified version of that circuit. A better way would be to write an expression of that original circuit and then using the rules and laws of Boolean algebra, simplify the expression. You would get a simplified version of the expression and if you directly implement the circuit using that expression, you would have a simple circuit. So let us look at Boolean operations. Shuru mein humne baat ki thi, do Boolean operations hain jo important hain or throughout Boolean logic mein use hote hain. Boolean addition and Boolean multiplication. Boolean addition is performed by an OR gate. So, do input ka OR gate hai A plus B. Ye A plus B jo hai, this is known as a sum term because sum kar rahe, addition kar rahe. Boolean multiplication is performed by an AND gate. So, if you have a two input AND gate, you have a product term A dot B. A dot B is known as the product term because multiply ka result hai, multiplication ka result hai. Uh, let us uh, look at some other sum terms and product terms and let us look at what would be the output of this sum term if one of the variables is set to 0 or 1. 
Let us first look at Boolean addition. Boolean addition gives us a sum term. A sum term is described as sum of literals. So as you can see, A plus B is a sum term which is in fact a sum of literals. Another term A plus B bar, again it is a valid sum term, it is again a sum of literals. The third expression A bar plus B bar plus C is again a sum term composed of three literals. Now a sum term is equal to 1 if any literal is equal to 1, considering A plus B, A 1 ho jai, ya B 1 ho jai, the output is going to be a 1. Similarly, A plus B bar ko agar dekha jai, in me se koi bhi literal agar 1 ho jai, output 1 ho gi. A sum term is equal to 0 if all literals are equal to 0. So considering A bar plus B bar plus C, the output or the sum term is 0 if A bar is 0, B bar is 0 and C is 0. Similarly, considering the term A plus B bar, the output is 0 or the sum term is 0 if A is 0 and B bar is 0. Let us now look at Boolean multiplication. Boolean multiplication results in a product term. Product term is described as a product of literals. So you have three product terms as can be seen A B, A B bar and A bar B bar C. Now a product term is equal to 1 if all literals are equal to 1. So A B would give you a 1 result if A is 1 and B is 1. Similarly, A B bar would give you a 1 result if A is 1 and B bar is 1. A product term is equal to 0 if any one literal is equal to 0. So considering the term, the product term A bar B bar C, if any one literal is 0, the entire term would be 0. So if A bar is 0 or B bar is 0 or C is 0 or all three terms literals are zeros, the product would be a 0. We have just looked at uh, Boolean addition and Boolean multiplication. We have looked at the sum term and the product term. Now when you write Boolean expressions and solve Boolean expressions, they are solved on the basis of certain rules, laws and theorems. Normal algebra may be, koi bhi aap equation ko solve karte hai, to it is done according to certain rules and theorems. So now let us uh, look at uh, some rules and laws and theorems being applied in Boolean algebra. There are three laws being applied in Boolean algebra the associative law, the distributed law and the commutative law. These three laws are in normal algebra mein bhi use ho rahe hai, usi tarah use hote Then there are certain rules, I think there are about 12 rules, again we are going to be looking at those rules. Then we have two theorems, De Morgan's theorems, so again we would be looking at the uh, two theorems. So now let us have a look at the, uh, the three laws the rules and the theorems applied in Boolean algebra. The basic laws of Boolean algebra are the same as ordinary algebra and hold true for any number of variables. So let us start by looking at the commutative law. Commutative law for addition states that sum of A literal and B literal that is A or B is equal to B or A. If you have three literals A, B and C, the commutative law states that A or B or C is equal to C or B or A. Implementation wise an OR gate is used. So if you have a two input OR gate, it does not matter if you connect the literal A to the first input or to the second uh, input. In both cases the output would be the same. Let us consider the commutative law for multiplication. The commutative law for multiplication states that product of literal A and B is equal to product of B and A. Again implementation wise an AND gate is used because multiplication of course is done using AND gates. So according to the com uh, commutative law for multiplication it does not matter if you connect the literal A to the first input or the second input of the AND gate, the result would always be the same. Again you could have multiple literals A, B, C and D, 
the law holds true for multiple literals. Let us now consider the associative law for addition. The associative law for addition states that sum of B and C literals that is B or C odd with A is the same as A or B odd with C. Implementation wise you require a combination of two OR gates. So, the inputs are 3 A, B and C. So, any of these three inputs can be connected to any of the three literals A, B or C, the output would be the same. Let us consider the associative law for multiplication. The associative law for multiplication states that the product of B and C, B and C ended with literal A is the same as the product of literals A, B ended with C. Implementation wise, you would use a combination of two AND gates. So, altogether you would have three inputs, any of the three literals A, B and C can be connected to any three inputs, the output would be the same. You could have four literals, five literals, the associative law for multiplication would hold true. The distributive law states that B or C ended with A is equal to A B odd with A C. The left side of the expression that is B or C ended with A can be implemented by using a combination of AND gate and OR gate. The inputs B and C are odd together, the output of the OR gate is connected to an AND gate and the result is B or C ended with A. The right side of the expression A B the product of A B odd with the product of A and C can be implemented using three gates, two AND gates and an OR gate. So, the first AND gate is connected to inputs A and B, the product is A B. The second AND gate is connected to inputs A and C, the product is A C. The outputs of the two AND gates are connected to an OR gate, the output of the OR gate is product A B odd with product A C. Let us have a look at 12 rules of Boolean algebra. The first rule A OR 0 is equal to A. This can be proved by assigning values to the variable A. If A is 0, what is the result? The result is 0. If A is 1, what is the result? The result is 1. So, the output is the same uh, is equal to A. The second rule A or 1 is equal to 1. Now, by assigning values to the variable A 0 or 1, the output remains a 1. The third rule A product 0. So, as we have uh, discussed before, anything multiplied by 0 gives you a 0. So, A product 0 is equal to 0. The fourth rule A product 1 is equal to A. We have studied this before as well. Anything multiplied by 1 gives you the same thing. Rule number 5 A or A is equal to A. Again this can be proved by applying applying or assigning values to the variable A. So, if A is 0, so it is 0 or 0 which is equal to 0. If A is 1, then the rule becomes 1 or 1, the result is 1. Rule number 6 A or A bar is equal to 1. Again let us apply the two values to the variable A. If A is 0, then the equation becomes 0 or 1, the result is 1. If A is 1, the equation becomes 1 or 0, the result is again a 1. Rule number 7, A product A is equal to A. Again let us check, if A has the value 0, so the equation becomes 0 and 0, 
the result is 0. If a is equal to 1, it's 1 and 1, the result is 1. Rule number 8, a and a bar, the result is 0. Applying the two values, if a is equal to 0, the equation becomes 0 and 1, the result is 0. Similarly, if a is equal to 1, the equation becomes 1 and 0, the result is again a 0. Rule number 9, a double bar is equal to a, double bar means complemented twice. So, if you have a single bar that means complemented once, if you have a double bar you complement the complement again. So, that means you have just cancelled out the two complements. So, if a is equal to 0, the answer would remain a 0, if a is equal to 1, uh, it would the answer would remain a 1. Rule number 10 a odd with the product term a b, the result is a. We can prove this, a is common in both the terms. So, if you take a as a common, you are left with 1 or b. Now, 1 or b, if you apply a rule 2 is equal to 1. So, you are left with a product 1, which is equal to a. Rule 11, a or a bar b, which is equal to a or b. This can again be proved, a can be multiplied with sum of b plus 1, the result is 1. So, you apply, uh, you multiply a with 1, it would remain an a. So, you multiply a with b or 1, you Simplify the equation, this gives you a b plus a and the previous term a bar b. Now, readjusting the expression, you have a plus a b plus a bar b. Now, considering b which is common in terms a b and a bar b, if you simplify this, the equation turns out to be a plus b. The last rule, rule number 12 a or b ended with the sum term a plus c or a or c. The result is a odd with the product term b c. This can be proved by rewriting the equation. So, a multiplied by a gives you a, a ended with c gives you a c, b ended with a gives you a b b ended with c gives you b c. Now, considering the first three terms a, a c and a b, you have a common a. So, if you remove the common a, the remaining portion is equal to 1. So, the equation simplifies to a plus b c. Now, let us consider De Morgan's theorems. There are two theorems. The first theorem states the complement of a product of variables is equal to the sum of the complements of the variables. In form of an equation, a b whole bar is equal to a bar plus b bar. De Morgan's theorem, the first theorem holds true for any number of variables. Implementation wise, a b whole bar is implemented using a NAND gate. The right side of the equation a bar plus b bar is implemented again by a NAND gate, but the alternate symbol of the NAND gate is used. Let us consider the second theorem, De Morgan's second theorem states that the complement of sum of variables is equal to the product of the complements of the variables. Writing the expression, it is a or b whole bar equals to a bar ended with b bar. Implementation wise, you have a NOR gate. So, a NOR b gives you a plus b or a or b complemented. The right side of the equation a bar ended with b bar can be implemented using the same NOR gate, but represented in its 
alternate symbolic form. Again, the second theorem of De Morgan's holds true for multiple variables. De Morgan's theorem can be applied to expressions having any number of variables. So, let us have a look. The first expression x and y and z whole bar is equal to x bar plus y bar plus z bar. Similarly, x or y or z whole bar is equal to x bar ended with y bar ended with z bar. De Morgan's theorem can be applied to a combination of other variables. Let us have a look at the expression. The expression is A or B C. This is considered to be a single term ended with another term which is A C or with B. Both these terms are complemented. So, you have an entire bar over the product of the two terms. These two terms according to De Morgan's theorem can be written as A plus B C whole bar plus A C plus B whole bar. The plus of course, indicates the or operation. This equation can be further simplified to A bar B C bar plus A C bar B bar. This can further be simplified to A bar ended with B bar plus C bar plus B bar ended with sum of A bar and C bar. This expression can be further rewritten as A bar B bar odd with A bar C bar odd with A bar B bar odd with B bar C bar. Final expression is A bar B bar plus A bar C bar plus B bar C bar. We have looked at the laws, rules and theorems used in Boolean algebra. You need to practice uh, these laws, rules and theorems, you need to know about them because we would be applying these uh, rules and laws uh, throughout uh, this course. Let us now look at the application of uh, these Boolean expressions to analyze a circuit. Let us consider an expression A plus B ended with C. Now, what kind of information does this expression convey? Well, A or, or B means a two input OR gate is being used. The output of this is connected to an AND gate and the other input of the AND gate is connected to the variable C. So, basically A or B ended with C gives you three variables. right? So, if you write out the function of this OR gate and AND gate circuit, kitne inputs honge, kitne columns honge, teen columns honge, kitne possible input combinations ho sakte hain? Well, since there are three input variables, therefore, you have eight possible combinations. What is the output of this circuit? Again, you can analyze that by applying the appropriate inputs. Let us say you start with the combination 0, 0 and 0. So, A or A or B is 0 or 0 which is 0. Ended with C, anything ended with 0 is going to give you a 0. So, the output is going to be 0. Instead of you using all the 8 terms, you can find the output just by looking at the equation. C is ended with the OR of A and B, A or B ended with C. Now, if A or B is a 1 and C is a 1, then you would get a 1 output. If either A or B is a 0 or C is a 0, you would get a 0 output. Right? So, if we know this, then we can easily determine for which particular combination of zeros and ones you would get a one output. Let us have a look at another circuit and let us analyze that circuit using the Boolean expression. Let us consider the expression A and B odd with C bar and the entire term ended with D. Now, what type of or what kind of uh, information does this expression convey? 
basically there are four variables so the circuit represented by this expression is going to have four inputs and of course a single output now by looking at the expression again the variables a and b are ended together so a two input and gate is required the output of the and gate is odd with c bar that means a an a not gate is required the input of this not gate is connected to c the output of the not gate is c bar so the output of the not gate and the output of the and gate are connected to the input of an OR gate. So, it is a two input OR gate. The output of the OR gate would of course, be A and B odd with C bar. We have the fourth variable, variable D. It is ended with the term A B plus C bar. So, how do we end D with the uh, A B plus C bar term? you use an AND gate, a two input AND gate. Now, for which particular combinations of ones and zeros for the inputs A, B, C and D, the output is going to be a one. Let us again have a look at the expression. The output is going to be one if D is one and the term A, B plus C bar is a one. Now, how would the term A, B plus C bar be a one? if a b is a 1 and the literal c bar is a 1. How is the and term a b going to be 1? If both a and b are 1's, the literal c bar, how is that going to be 1? If c is 0. So, when do you obtain a 1 output? When a is 1, b is 1, c is 0 and d is 1. So, for this particular combination of 1's and zeros, you obtain a 1 output. Now, this can be verified by drawing out a function table. So, what is the size of the function table? How many input columns are required? Basically, there are 4 variables a, b, c and d. So, there are 4 input columns a, b, c and d. How many input combinations are possible? Since there are 4 variables, so 16 different input combinations are possible. The output of course, is 1 represented by f. Now, let us write all the outputs for each of these 16 combinations. Starting with the first combination of 0, 0, 0, 0, the output is 0. Why? Because d is 0. Considering the second input 0, 0, 0, 1. Now, in this particular case, D is 1 and C is 0. So, both the conditions are satisfied, the answer is or the output is 1. Similarly, for the input condition 0, 1, 0, 1, again D is 1 and C is 0, the conditions are satisfied, the output is again going to be a 1. Let us consider the input 1, 0, 0, 1, again D is 1 c is 0, the conditions are satisfied, the output is again going to be a 1. Let us consider inputs, the inputs 1 1 0 1. In this particular case, d is 1, c is 0, a and b are both 1's. So, all 4 conditions are satisfied, the output is going to be a 1. The last input combination 1 1 1 1, d is a 1, c is a 1. So, this particular condition is not satisfied, but a and b both are 1's. Therefore, the output is again going to be a 1. We have looked at two examples of analyzing uh, Boolean circuits or logic circuits using Boolean expressions. Basically, we would be using this method to analyze different circuits throughout the course. So, it is important that you learn to use these expressions to analyze circuits. I would suggest you just write any expression, simple expression of 3 or 4 variables, uh, then try to decipher that expression. Then I would suggest that you look at the expression and see what for which particular combination of inputs you get a 1 output. Okay. 
इसको आप वेरीफाई कर सकते हैं अगर आप उसका फंक्शन टेबल बना लें सो so, अगर आपके एक्सप्रेशन में लेट से चार वेरिएबल्स हैं तो आपका फंक्शन टेबल जो है उसमें भी चार कॉलम्स आएंगे उसमें 16 कॉम्बिनेशन होंगी तो सारे 16 कॉम्बिनेशन लिख लें उसमें और उसके साथ आप आउटपुट कैलकुलेट करते जाएं यूजिंग दी सर्किट और उसको आप वेरीफाई कर दें बाय अप्लाइंग दोज वैल्यूज इन द एक्सप्रेशन और एक्सप्रेशन का आउटपुट भी देख लें तो दोनों चीज़ें एक दूसरे को वेरीफाई करेंगे सो इट इज़ इम्पॉर्टेंट दैट यू प्रैक्टिस विद द एनालिस ऑफ सर्किट्स यूजिंग दिस बोलियन एक्सप्रेशन Now the the other uh, thing uh, which we said uh, we use the expression is to simplify circuits. अगर circuit कोई एक बना हुआ है उसको simplify करना देखने से आपको अंदाज़ा नहीं होगा So the best way is to write an expression representing that circuit and then apply the rules of al uh, Boolean algebra, laws and theorems जो हमने discuss किए थे That would give you a simpler expression. When you have that simple expression, then of course you can always implement uh, a circuit using that expression. The expression which we are going to uh, use and simplify in the example is a three-variable expression. It represents a large circuit. We are going to be uh, simplifying this expression using the rules, laws uh, studied so far. uh we would get a simpler expression then we would implement that expression we would obtain a circuit which of course would be very simple as compared to the uh, original uh, circuit the functionality of both the circuits would of course be the same so let us have a look the expression is uh, composed of three terms the term a and b the second term b or c ended with a and the third term b or c ended with b if you simplify uh, uh, this expression consisting uh, consisting of three terms you have ab odd with ab odd with ac odd with bb odd with bc now some of these terms simplify ab is common so you just remove one of the terms bb simplifies to b so you end up with an expression ab odd with ac odd with b odd with bc this expression can be further simplified uh b and the term bc you have a common b so you end up with b ended with 1 plus c 1 plus c is equal to 1 so you end up with the term b now you have the expression ab odd with ac odd with b now b is the common literal in the terms ab and b so if you simplify these two terms you end up with the literal b so the expression is b odd ac let us have a look at the circuits represented by the original expression having the three terms and the simplified expression having the two terms b or ac the original circuit is made up of three and gates and two or gates the or gate used at the input has two inputs and the or gate used at the output has three inputs all together you require five gates let us now look at the simplified expression and the circuit resulting out of that simplified expression only two gates are required an and gate and an or gate so you have removed three gates the circuit is simpler uh, less power is required and perhaps it is faster than the original circuit we have just looked at an example of simplification of boolean expressions to implement simpler circuits again this method would be used throughout the course you would be writing expressions you would be simplifying them to simplify and implement simpler circuits so i would advise that you practice you just write some expressions um, you implement a circuit which represents that expression and then you uh, simplify the expression and then implement the circuit aapne ye confirm karna hoga ki dono circuits jo ek jaisa function kar rahe hain ya kaam kar rahe hain हाउ डू यू डू दैट ऑफ कोर्स आप फंक्शन टेबल्स के थ्रू कर सकते हैं या वैल्यूज एक्सप्रेशन में दोनों एक्सप्रेशन में डाल के चेक कर सकते हैं उसमें ना वी हैव बीन राइटिंग एक्सप्रेशन डिफरेंट टाइप की हमने एक्सप्रेशन देखी 
there are two standard ways of writing expressions. One is the sum of products form and the other is product of sum form. Before we look at uh, the two ways of writing uh, these expressions, let me describe what is the sum of product form. You have already been writing expressions in this form. Basically, you have product terms A, B, C, it is a product term, D, E bar, it is another product term. So, A, B, C plus D, E bar, it is sum of product terms. You have two product terms, you have summed them up. This expression is basically how you implement it. Basically, you would be using a combination of AND gates and an OR gate. Product terms how you will get by using AND gates. In sari terms, ko jab apne jama karna, add karna, you would use an AND gate. Let us look at the product of sum terms. Product of sum terms at the name indicates is sum terms which are ANDed together. So, let us consider the sum term A plus B. It is the sum term because you are uh, implementing an OR operation between two variables. You have another sum term C or D. Now, if you AND these two terms together, that is A or B ANDed with C plus D, you get the sum of rather the product of sum terms. Implement kaise karenge? You would be using a combination of OR gates and AND gate. Jo sum terms hai, wo aap implement karenge using OR gates. In saaron ka jo output hai, that, was, uh, that would be connected to a single AND gate. Let us have a look at an example which shows the representation of different sum of product terms and product of sum terms. But before we do that, normally any expression can be easily converted into a sum of product term expression. Let us look at sum of products form first. There are three expressions. The first expression is A and B odd with A, B, C. So, you have two product terms and they are odd together. The second example is you have three product terms, the product term A, B, C the second product term C D E and the third product term B bar C D bar. Now, all these three product terms are implemented using three gates, three AND gates and each of these three AND gates have a three input, uh, have three inputs. Sum of products is implemented by using a single OR gate having three inputs. The third example is A bar B, the second product term in this example is a bar B C bar and the third term is A C. Again a combination of AND gates and a single OR gate is used. You would require two AND gates having two inputs and a single AND gate having three inputs. You would of course require a single three input OR gate. Now, let us look at, uh, look at examples of product of sums form. Again there are three expressions the first expression has two sum terms which are multiplied together. So, the first term is A bar odd with B. The second term, the second sum term is A odd with B bar odd with C. Now, both these two terms are ended together to give you the product of sums form. The second expression has three sum terms. The first sum term has A bar plus B bar plus C bar the second sum term is C plus D bar plus E and the third, the third sum term is B bar plus C plus D. All these sum terms are ended together. Now, how many OR gates and AND gates are required? Well, there are three OR terms. So, three OR gates are required. What should be the inputs of these OR gates? Basically, in each sum term, there are three variables. So, three input OR gates are required. Now, the final uh, expression is product of these three sum terms. So, you need to have a three input AND gate to AND all the three sum terms. The last expression again has three prod, uh, sum terms. The first sum term is A plus B. The second uh, sum term is 
a plus b bar plus c and the third sum term is a bar plus c. Again three OR gates are required, two OR gates have two inputs and a single OR gate has three inputs. The outputs of all these three gates are ended together by using a single three input AND gate. The diagram shows the implementation of the first sum of uh, product uh, expression. Again two AND gates are used and a single OR gate is used. The second diagram shows the implementation of the product of sum terms. Uh, three OR gates are used and the results or the outputs of these OR gates are ended together to give you the uh, product of sum terms. Any general expression can be converted to the standard sum of product form. Let us consider the expression a b plus b ended with the sum of c d plus e f. So, you have a product term c d plus e f, this entire term is ended with b and this entire term is added with the product term a b. Now, if you simplify this, you end up with a b plus b c d plus b e f. The original expression is not in the standard SOP form. The simplified version has been converted into the standard sum of product form. Let us consider the second example. You have two sum terms ended together. So, the first sum term is a plus b, the second sum term is b plus c plus d. Now, to convert this into the standard sum of products form, you simplify the expression. So, you end up with the terms a b odd with a c odd with a d plus b plus b c plus b d. If you simplify this expression removing the common terms, you end up with a c plus a d plus b which is the standard sum of products form. The third expression is a plus b bar odd with c whole bar. Now, this is not a standard sum of products form. Now, this has to be simplified. So, you end up with a plus b double bar ended with c bar. Now, what did we say when you have double bars over an expression? Basically, both the bars are removed. So, in this particular case, a plus b double bar is simplified to a plus b and c bar remains as it is. Now, if you simplify the expression, you end up with a c bar plus b c bar. So, you have converted the original general expression into sum of products form. Today we have looked at Boolean algebra. We have uh, simplified uh, Boolean expressions using some rules which we have studied. Uh, we have also looked at simplifying circuits using Boolean expressions. We will continue with these Boolean expressions in the next lecture. Hope to see you again. The Hafiz. Assalamu alaikum.